Hello rugby fans, I'm Brendan Monroe and we are here at Stanley Park in Vancouver, British Columbia where we bring you Canadian Direct Insurance Premier League Men's Rugby between the Vancouver Rowing Club and Castaway Wanderers, the game just underway. Castaway Wanderers are to our left in the black shorts with red and blue hoops. Vancouver Rowing Club to our right in the black shorts with the red and white hoops. Pretty close matching kits. It makes life difficult for the referees. It'll make life difficult for the broadcasters. But in the end, both very strong rugby clubs with a lot to prove. Castaway Wanderers bring a very solid lineup. Uh, certainly their most talented squad they've been able to run onto the field so far this year. Let's start with the opening lineups for Castaway Wanderers. Number one, John Braddock at hooker. Ray Barkwill. Number three is Jake Ilnicki. In the second row, we have Hubert Bidens and Clayton Dom. Number six is Riley L. Nicky. Number seven, Lucas Albernose. Number eight, one of the Beardos, Adam Kleberger. Number nine, Riley McPherson. Ten, playing out of position is Clay Panga, fly half. Number 11, Keaton Horton. Number 12 is Lear Morris. 13, Johnny Morris. 14, Graham Turner. And 15, the fullback, is Aaron Frisbee, who just returns from... Las Vegas, we were coaching the under-23 BC women's team and did a great job. They finished with a 4-1 and one record. He's out there at fullback today. For the Vancouver Rowing Club, you're starting front row at number one, Keegan Watcham Roy, two, John Shaw, three, Chris Saylor. In the second row, we have Justin Parlato and Brandon Kay wearing number four and five, respectively. Number six is Michael Jordan, seven, Quinn Cowie. Number eight is Lachlan Campbell, nine, Andrew Meekin, 10, Connor Cleary, 11, Brett Lucas, 12, Romaine Planty, 13, Brian Durham, 14, Nick Samija, and 15 is Kevin Gurniak. We're right up in the balcony at the Brockton Pavilion, right in with the crowd. You'll certainly hear them throughout the day. And with that penalty, the rowers will be in excellent position for their first attack of the afternoon. The line out coming well inside the 22 meter line. And it will be John Shaw throwing in for the Vancouver Rowing Club. Coming off an 18 to 10 win in their last outing over the UBC old boy Ravens trying to make it a winning streak at two in a row and they attempt to claw their way back into the CDI playoff picture. There's seven points to drift right now, but a win would certainly help move them up. They do have a game in hand on some of the teams they're chasing. And they're trying hard to get the ball back right now, but it will be Castaway Wanderers. Panga hammering the ball down the field. Check that, that was uh, Frisbee collecting the ball. All the way, all the way. Off that last breakdown, the rowers now back on the front foot, trying to bring it forward. Sailor wrapped up. Now pressing their attack. 50-50 offload, does not connect, but the penalty will go their way. So an opportunity to put some points on the board should they choose to use the boot in this situation. Offside, the infringement on that last phase of play. And they have decided to use the boot. So it will be Romain Planty making his first kick of the day towards the posts. And he had a good afternoon of kicking when we saw him two weeks ago against the UBC Old Boy Ravens.
That kick is up and it is drifting through the uprights. Well struck by Romain Planty. Three points to the Vancouver Rowing Club taking advantage of an early mistake from the Castaway Wanderers with that offside. And they're putting three points onto the board on their account. With the Castaway Wanderers bringing their roster, their lineup today, one that hasn't really played much at all together, so that will take a period of feeling out. And that offside, an example of it. They'll want to uh, start cohesive play very quickly, but first step will be to get the ball back, and they've given away another penalty. And the rowers will have an opportunity to press this early lead. And that kick finds touch on halfway. And we'll have a line out to the Vancouver Rowing Club. Today's game is brought to you by Canadian Direct Insurance, B2 Gold, Neurogenesis Happy Water, Adira Live West Coast, Extreme Rugby Wear, Okanagan Spring Brewery, Grosvenor, Avison Young, Thorstensons, and Langara Fishing Adventures. And on that line out, an infraction. So we will go to our first scrum of the day. With the put in going to the Castaway Wanderers. There's a good pickup and some territory gained by Castaway Wanderers as that was. Adam Kleberger, who had the ball a moment ago. Now Panga, the playing at fly half with a little offload to Frisbee. Goes to his right to Johnny Morris. He's brought down, but this is good play from Castaway Wanderers. Back to Panga, over to Kleberger. Takes two men to bring him down. And they've earned a penalty advantage being played, and now the whistle goes, not rolling away the call. And Castaway Wanderers just over halfway with an opportunity to either kick to the corner or kick to posts as a little bit of foul tempers brewing to the surface here. And kicking to the corner will be the call. And that kick does find touch inside the 22. An opportunity for Castaway Wanderers to get their first points on the game. They're going for the full meal, looking for that first try. Just taking a moment to locate the game ball and bringing it now to the touchline where it will be Ray Barkwill throwing in for Canada for uh, Castaway Wanderers. Barkwill with a lot of experience at hooker for Ontario and for Canada as well. Bit of a sloppy breakdown, but Castaway Wanderers maintaining possession of the ball, now driving forward, requiring a couple more meters to get across the line. Defense stays in form for the rowers, but they'll have a lot of work to do as Castaways are knocking at the door. Ball held up in goals, a signal from our referee, Chris Asmus. Good defense from the Vancouver Rowing Club as they were able to hold the Castaway Wanderers offense at bay. And our first big moment of this match.
Castaway will look to stay on the attack with this put in at the scrum. Now driving that scrum forward, still short of the line. McPherson looking to pick it up and take it himself. Maul is formed as it drives sideways across the goal line. And a penalty try awarded on that play. So Castaway Wanderers opening their account. Now there's some uh, animosity between the clubs and hopefully nothing too crazy happens here. Definitely some scrappy play happening inside that mall resulting in the penalty try. In the end, the two teams separate and Castaway Wanderers have their first try of the game. With an opportunity to add a couple extra points with the boot. We see uh, our referee, Chris Asmus, conferring with his uh, assistant referee just to make sure that there weren't any punches thrown or anything worth carding in the uh, aftermath of that penalty try. And a referee calling the captains over. John Braddock sauntering his way over for Castaway Wanderers. Chris Saylor, the captain for Vancouver Rowing Club. We're not mic'd in with the referees right now, but I have not seen any cards awarded. certainly a stern talking to at minimum coming from our match official today. <laughs> now after all that is sorted, Aaron Frisbee will attempt to add the extra two points. Should be pretty easy work for him. And he does chip that through. So the Castaway Wanderers, seven points on the board now to the Rowers, three. So good reply from the lads from the island after giving up that early penalty and now find themselves with their first lead of the game. With the restart, ball high, just 10 meters in depth. Looks like it went far enough. And coming down with it are the rowers. Ball worked through an inside channel. And now on the 22 meter line are the rowers. Quickly in on that one were a couple players from Castaways, including Clay Panga, and the offside, I believe, was called there a penalty. Check that penalty to Castaway Wanderers. Oh, that is a card being issued. A yellow card being issued to Castaway Wanderers. That was number four. Keeper Bidens, I believe, is being sent off. So Castaway Wanderers will play short a man. And yeah, it was actually uh, an offside call. It was the uh, start of that play. And the yellow card being issued as a result. And we'll see if uh, Planty decides just to use the boot once again and take the points. And he has asked for the kicking tee. So that will be the case here.
a bit of a quick decision on the surface by referee Chris Asmus to issue a yellow card, but I suspect it came as a result of all of that pushing and shoving moments ago that he wasn't going to stand for anything and uh, given an opportunity moments later, reached into his pocket and did issue that card. So here we go, Planty with the kick. Strong kick, but the radar is off slightly and that drifts wide of the uprights. So the score remains, Castaway Wanderers seven, and the Vancouver Rowers three. And we'll get another restart. <laughs> As Panga's kick into the middle of the field is collected by the rowers and brought back against the grain, a hard hit being leveled there. So we haven't seen too many phases of rugby in uh, open play here, and we might get our first action of that type as the rowers plod their way forward just inside the halfway line. Castaway Wanderers hustling back to reform their tackle line. An errant pass there goes off the shin of Chris Saylor. He collects it, but it will be a knock-on ruled against, and so the scrum will go to Castaway Wanderers. An opportunity for the rowers slips away from them. And that running expanse of rugby just has not happened quite yet, but the conditions are very good and we expect to see some wide running rugby happening very soon here. The opportunity is there. Maybe we will see it now. Panga deciding to use the boot, getting it out of his own 22 and the ball is collected now by the rowers winger, I believe that was Graham Turner, but a turnover. Panga going for a run with it, fending one tackler now over to Frisbee. He is hit hard by Sailor, who was in there on the tackle. Bit of a size mismatch there, but a penalty for leaving their feet goes against the rowers. Frisbee still down after taking that heavy contact. So Chris Saylor was up in the line very early. Frisbee walks that off and Panga will find touch with that kick. Remember Castaway is still playing down a man after that last yellow card. About six minutes left on that yellow card and fraction about 20 minutes left here in the opening half. Bark will to throw in. They go deep and nicely collected by Castaway Rwanders. Looking for that line break. Nothing happening yet. Panga out to Kleberger. Keeps driving his feet. Still moving with the ball. Now he's finally brought down. Good run from him. That sets up Castaways nicely if they can move the ball through the hands. Frisbee tackled once more. Looking for that overlap. May have found one on the far left side, but a good tackle. The cross cover there by the Roars defender. Castaway Wanderers about 10 meters out from goal and advantage being played. A 
Little chip through attempt by Panga. Is there anyone running onto it? Kleberger could be there. He's on the ball and a try scored by Adam Kleberger. Good chip through by Clay Panga and Kleberger the fastest to respond to that one. Nice try by Castaway Wanderers. And they expand their lead now sitting on 12 with a conversion attempt to come. That's a very nice piece of rugby between uh, two players who haven't been in the Castaway Wanderers lineup very often. I believe this is only the fourth game for Clay Panga this season for CW and the first time we've seen Adam Kleberger out on the field since that 125th anniversary game last summer between BC and uh, the Canada Selects. So that'll probably feel pretty good for him to get back out there and to score that try. Well done to Castaway Wanderers. What was a pretty nice piece of rugby. And as I mentioned off the top, Clay Panga playing out of position. Usually he is at uh, six or seven today. He's playing, playing fly, fly half and good recognition that there was no one back to uh, get onto that ball. So good uh, decision making from Castaways, although Frisbee's kick is off the side of his boot and well wide. So the score remains now Castaway Wanderers 12, Vancouver Rowing Club 3. And that try comes with only 14 men on the field for Castaway Wanderers. Certainly a point of concern for the rowers as they had established that uh, early 3-0 lead and suddenly find themselves on the back foot. CW have traditionally been a very, very strong second half team second half of the uh, CDI season. They get a lot of players that come in from other areas of the province or other areas of the country in the new year. This is their first Canadian Direct Insurance Premier League game of 2015. Uh, they had one exhibition match against uh, Seattle last, last fixture. That had been two weeks ago. And so this is their first test as a group with their uh, fully stocked lineup. And so far, so good for Castaway Wanderers. And that scrum goes to ground. It has not been stopped yet. And the uh, play continues. Another chip through attempt by Castaway Wanderers. The ball gets under the feet of Kevin Gurniak. And he does go back and scoop it up on the line but a lot of pressure being exerted right now by Castaway Wanderers. Rowers trying desperately to get out from their own goal area and an offside. A little too much aggression there from CW earns the rowers a penalty and a chance to escape that situation. But the bouncing ball not going the rowers way there as that one slipped past Gurniak and suddenly they were in a lot of trouble which has just been alleviated courtesy of that uh, penalty kick. So outside the 22 now, the throw in will go to Vancouver Rowing Club, courtesy of the penalty. But you would not be able to tell they're the team playing with the extra man right now. As there's only two or three minutes remaining in that uh, Yellow card man advantage. Castaway Wanderers taking that line out against the throw. And the mall picking up steam as it drives forward, collecting three or four more meters in territory. Now the ball is out to Panga. He goes to his left. The ball hits the deck, but scooped up by Frisbee. And now into the Winger's hands on the left side. That is Keenan Horton trying to find the line. Stopped inside the 22. Now maybe an overlap on the right-hand side. If they can get it out quickly enough, the play's brought back.
And our referee talking to one of the players in the backfield there. We'll set up the scrum as we have just under 10 minutes remaining in the first half. The score, Castaway Wanderers 12, Vancouver Rowing Club 3. Some early pushing there in the scrum. Now the ball is out, collected by Castaway Wanderers. They are on the attack. Deep inside the 22. But a penalty slows down that offensive foray. Check that a knock on, and it will be a scrum to the Vancouver Rowing Club. <laughs> the rowers have spent the last 10 minutes on the back foot despite having the advantage in number of men after that yellow card. <laughs> to the C-dub second rower. Another strong drive on the scrum from Castaway Wanderers. May produce a try and in fact it does pick up of the ball was very quick. And I believe that was Kleeberger once again who has scored the try for Castaway Wanderers. He's having a great afternoon. So that scrum was driven back and the ball quickly scooped up by Kleeberger who's playing at number eight. And he dives in for the try. So the lead extended for Castaway Wanderers now 17 to three. And they are playing their best game of rugby this year so far. Frisbee makes amends for his last conversion. This one straight and true, 19 to three. Now in favor of the Castaway Wanderers. What a night and day difference it is since the last time we broadcast a CW game as they dropped a very lopsided affair to James Bay. Here they are on the front foot and they are well in control of this game, looking very much in form. And the rowers who seemed so tenacious just a couple of weeks ago against the UBC old boy Ravens are suddenly in trouble here as they need to do something to stem the tide to stop the bleeding as it's been all CW for the last 15 minutes. That kick trying to split the fullback and the winger and it does buying a couple extra seconds but there's a great return kick. Will it find touch? No, it stays in play. Now we'll have a whistle for an advantage that occurred earlier. <laughs> and with that penalty, Castaway Wanderer is able to kick this one into touch. This one stays in the middle of the field though. And it will be the rowers trying to set up their own attack. Another offside infraction here. <laughs> it's probably kickable. It's within uh, Plantain Ro or Romaine Planty's range.
and he will set up the tee. The rowers have not threatened the uh, try line so far. But they could certainly use some extra points on the board. The whole key is just to get the scoreboard rolling over, ticking over in your favor. And this kick coming from about 35 meters from Planty. Strong looking kick. This time he's got the laser guided sights on that one and the ball sails through the uprights. Finally, the rowers doing something to slow down Castaway's offense there, getting three points of their own. The score now 19 for Castaway Wanderers and six for rowers. That pass goes to ground and a second pass. Looked like we might have had an overlap there, but that play is coming back. Another infraction, another yellow card for offside, I believe. There's too many of those happening right now. Castaway not happy about it. We'll see who the person being sent off was. The rowers being given lots of opportunities to get back into this game. Courtesy of seeing discipline from uh, Castaway Wanderers. The CW, the beneficiaries of that last penalty and the ball just getting to the touch line and our touch judge says that one was a foot and touch so just enough distance on that kick and that's important because we're going to get a line out in favor of castaway wanderers well inside the 22 they'll have about seven or eight meters to cover once uh should they be able to win this line out another great opportunity to extend their lead A little confusion here. Are we doing a line out or are we doing a scrum? Was the ball knocked forward? Was there a foot and touch? while we sort this out, we would like to once again thank our sponsors who help us deliver rugby every Saturday, our feature game of the week this week, brought to you by Canadian Direct Insurance, B2 Gold, Neurogenesis Happy Water, Adira, Live West Coast, Extreme Rugby Wear, Okanagan Spring Brewery, Grosvenor, Avis and Young, Thorstensons, and Langara Fishing Adventures. So in the end, it looks like we will be getting a scrum. The decision there that uh, touch finding penalty did not quite find touch, but that the ball was knocked forward on the attempted reception in play. So the put in goes to Castaway Wanderers. Either way, they benefit from that last uh, sequence. And now an opportunity to drive that pack forward towards the line. few more meters left to go. Good push from Castaway Wanderers. And they attempted to take that penalty quickly. They'll have to bring this one back and it looks like they will do another scrum at about five meters from goal. 
Castaway Wanderers able to keep their foot on the gas and sustain that pressure as we close into the uh, final moments of the first half. Right at the line, will we see another pick and go? No, we won't. We have another penalty try being awarded. It's unusual to see those penalty tries. Two in a game, even more unusual, and that is the way the Castaway Wanderers are scoring their points right now. As it's all hands on deck for the Vancouver Rowing Club, and they are continuing to commit penalties under pressure. Castaway Wanderers, the beneficiary of that penalty try, now extending their lead 24 to 6. Make that 26 to 6 with the conversion. And it's been a very strong first half of rugby for Castaway Wanderers. Who have returned to their typical second half of the season form. Getting some very talented players out there on the field and they're quickly looking like a cohesive unit <laughs> playing rugby together and racking up the points. Kleeberger on the restart, ducks under a tackle, and, and then goes over another one. Now the ball spun out to Panga. His pass goes to ground, Frisbee picks it up. He's wrapped up by three rowers, but Wanderers, good support, able to retain possession. Barkwell on the deck. The ball is spilled, and there's hands in the rock. And a penalty to Castaway Wanderers. The pressure stays on the rowers. They are unable to get anything organized and mount any kind of offensive foray here. Panga finds touch on halfway. Couple moments left in this first half. Ball distributed up the left side, staying in play. Now back into the middle of the field, trying to set up some phase play here are the Castaway Wanderers. Panka goes back inside to his left. That is Keenan Horton going for a run over to Graham Turner and a try scored in the corner for the winger, number 14. And the onslaught continues here for Castaway Wanderers. Great looking line break there. Ball traded hands a couple more times before crossing the line. And that extends the Castaway Wanderers lead to 31 to six with a conversion to come. So the back rower, Panga, not looking too out of sorts at all, playing at fly half today. Good distribution on that last one as he sucked in the defender and distributed to his left. Able to set up that break and that try for Castaway Wanderers. Yeah. 
Long kick for Frisbee, just a little bit short. Nicky over to Kleberger. He hits the deck and a penalty coming as there were uh, there's no release there happening from castaways and an opportunity once again to uh, get some points with the boot. Another 30 meter kick coming up. They're scouting out the uh, the corner of the field. And it looks like instead of going for the post, they're going to try to go for the corner. And why not with a 25-point deficit? Does that ball get out? Just barely. As Panga was trying to tight wire the uh, touch line there and keep the ball in play, but it slips through his hands. And we have a line out coming up for the Vancouver Rowing Club. The uh, throw coming from John Shaw, about 10 meters to cover. Should they be able to retain it? And they do. Can they set up the mall? The mall is formed, but it is being pushed back by Castaway Wanderers. Rowers going in the wrong direction, but now they will try to push their way forward on the ground. And a knock on. Unfortunately, it goes against them. And it's been that kind of half for the Vancouver Rowing Club. Things just not going their way, not uh, looking as coordinated as we've seen them in recent games. And a bit of a story of missed opportunities and missed tackles here in the first half. Panga trying to fight his way through tacklers. It requires three or four of them to wrap him up, but they eventually do. That ball's knocked forward. Advantage being played. Sailor has the ball. Can he make it to the line? He's wrapped up just short. Another couple meters to go. Here's a good opportunity for the Vancouver Rowing Club. Can they use it effectively? They have numbers out wide. They stay in the middle channel. Castaway able to reset their defense. And that ends our first half on that penalty. And as I said moments ago, that's just been the kind of half that it has been for the Vancouver Rowing Club. The, the uh, halftime score, Castaway Wanderers 31, the Vancouver Rowing Club 6. And we will be back for second half action in just a few minutes. At Canadian Direct Insurance, we've all had a first car, and a second car, and then something that more closely resembles a bus. We've carpooled, car tripped, and carpool tripped. We've even had car mishaps. That's why we give you the kind of service we'd expect for ourselves. Canadian Direct Insurance. every passion, there is an ultimate destination. A place revered by countless tales. For salmon fishing, that destination is Langara Island.
immerse yourself in natural splendor and enjoy the greatest fishing experience of your life at Langara Fishing Lodge. Silly Willy Billy is a million miles away When I had a little mind that I needed him to say But I don't now, cause I'm on my dad, I'm a grown-up boy Saving all my money, gonna buy myself a new toy Took a jet to the bottom of the visionary mind Where I'm making up the words to a song that doesn't rhyme If you can't see me, then you better leave a note Wait, scratch that, cause I'm never gonna be at home Home, such a funny little thought Everybody thinks now that I ought to rock Nah, true, if you know what's best for you Shut my eyes down now, can I get a deep blue? Sipping, tapping up like a full-grown man Even got a beard now, got a different so grand On account of the land in the middle of my palm And I can't admit I go along Gotta jump now, it's almost 75 degrees If you're looking at the window, bet you feel the breeze Got enough sun now to make the skin wanna dive Outside one time, let's fly high rise Got an itty bitty care on the itty bitty earth If you don't know what to wear, then you don't know what it's worth If you don't know what it's worth, then you don't know what you're missing Everybody in the right mind gonna wish in Okay, here we go Ha! Always your time We're back for second half action here at beautiful Stanley Park, Brockton Oval in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's the visitors, Castaway Wanderers, who came out and dominated in that first half. 31 to six is the score. A couple of tries from Adam Kleberger playing his first game of the season for Castaway Wanderers. And a couple of penalty kicks from Romain Planty, the only points on the board for the Vancouver Rowing Club in response. They'll look for a much stronger second half and it starts with this possession here. That ball is out, advantage being played. Castaway on the front foot. A little chip through attempt from Keenan Horton. And we have a penalty as the rowers try to restart quickly. Planty on the far side gets to the 22, couple meters beyond that. And the ball finally goes to ground. Chris Saylor trying to bring it forward for the rowers. And now they will kick it into Castaway Wanderers territory. Frisbee with the ball. He'll try to find a seam. Is there room along that touch line? He feeds it back into Kleberger, offloads. Keenan Horton, the ball is kicked forward and diving back on it, a couple of rowers players. And we'll bring this one back outside the 22. Look like a little uh, 
Interference potentially being run there. But the ball was dotted down in goal by a desperate <laughs> pair of Vancouver Rowing Club defenders. So we'll get the 22 meter dropout. On the reset, Panga has the ball. <laughs> Offloaded to Albernoz. We haven't called his name too often today. Castaway continuing their offensive push. It's been all Castaway Wanderers so far. A good leg drive there by Ray Barkwell as he got low and fended off a couple of rowers. Just outside the 22. That ball is knocked on. Alberno is not quite able to squeeze the pill there and we'll have a scrum right in front of us. As we've seen lots of good rugby from Castaway Wanderers so far in this game and their second half started just like the first half ended. They have about a half dozen players that haven't played very much at all together this season that are getting their first run as a team out there today and they have looked very sharp. No off season rust, no rust showing from that long break. Their last game was on November 22nd. So that's a long time between Premier League games. Kleberger diving on the ball. And he has it under the bottom there, but a knock-on will be called. <laughs> Kleberger has been a big impact player in this game. We've called his name a number of times. He has a couple of tries to his name so far. And he is really making a difference in that Castaway Wanderers lineup right now. Not often a number eight can change the complexion of a game, but he has certainly been a very impactful force on this game so far. So taking a little bit of effort here to get this scrum organized and we'll try it once again. It'll be Andrew Meekin with the put in. That ball is hooked back and the rowers have it. Is there a little bit of space on the blind side? Not quite enough. Turnover ball as the Castaway Wanderers have it now. Right in the middle of the field, right on the 22 meter line. Quick hands to the left. Panga will call his own number. Now the offload to Kleberger. He's got open field to work with in front of him. Three more rowers players on him whenever he has the ball. He's finally wrapped up, but there's a breakthrough and a try scored by Hubert Bidens. And Castaway Wanderers continue to be on the offense here as they keep the hammer down. Another five points, 36 now for Castaway Wanderers. Non-stop relentless pressure from them. <laughs> Aaron Frisbee with the conversion, and that is good. Now the score, 38 to six. It's getting pretty out of hand here as far as the uh, score line goes. The final outcome, not so much in doubt at this point in time. We still have a lot of rugby to play in the second half. As you heard just moments ago, we had people wishing well wishes to the people in Quebec. We have Canada East versus Canada West happening in Quebec later on this year. The best players from BC 
will be selected at the uh, U18 level, U16 level, and uh, they will be heading out to uh, Quebec later on in August to represent Western Canada, and they'll be playing against the best from Eastern Canada. We look forward to a very busy summer of uh, representative rugby at the provincial, the national level for our age grade players, who will one day be the core of this men's Premier League and uh, the women's Premier League as well. And the competition seems to be a little one-sided right now for Castaway Wanderers as they continue to put the ball on the foot and chase after it and the rowers under a lot of pressure and causing their own headaches right now as that uh, pass was spilled forward by Chris Saylor. A knock on and a scrum roll result. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors who help us deliver rugby every Saturday. And today's featured game of the week is brought to you by Canadian Direct Insurance, B2 Gold, Neurogenesis Happy Water, Adira Live West Coast, Extreme Rugby Wear, Okanagan Spring Brewery, Grosvenor, Avis and Young, Thorstensons, Langara Fishing Adventures. And we'd like to also thank all of our sponsors who are able to help us deliver a great sevens program down in Las Vegas just last weekend as we had two teams bring home championships at the boys U16 and U18 levels. Congratulations to them and congratulations to all the other teams, seven BC teams in total that did very well at the Vegas sevens. <laughs> Looks like that ball was held up in goal. Finally, a bit of a defensive break there for the Vancouver Rowing Club as they continue to be under a ton of pressure from this very strong Castaway Wanderers lineup. <laughs> it's amazing to think Castaway Wanderers are sitting on one point in the standings through seven games right now and in danger of relegation as they are nine points adrift of the second to last place uh, UBC Old Boy Ravens. They will want bonus point wins the rest of the way and they have the four tries they need already in this one to secure that bonus point. They just have to hold on for the next 30 some minutes. But they're not content just to sit back and play in the middle of the park as they continue to try to add points to their total in this one. Good drive here from Castaway Wanderers as they're right at the line once again. And a try scored. I did not see who grabbed the ball at the back, but that may be Adam Kleberger's hat trick try. As he was at the back of the pack there. Until I see it officially on a game sheet, I will say that that was his third try of the game. Adam Kleberger having one heck of a match here in his return to the Canadian Direct Insurance Men's Premier League. And that bumps our score line up another five points. Now 43 to six. For Castaway Wanderers and the onslaught continues. Frisbee's kick is short. The points on the conversion at this phase, academic really. The rowers trying to catch the Castaway Wanderers disorganized and they take that restart very quickly. Castaway happy just to hack that one into touch so they can slow things down and reset. 
It's worth taking some risks at this point for the Roars to try to get themselves back in the game. As I mentioned earlier, the outcome not really in doubt at this point in time, but you certainly want to play some positive rugby, see if you can get a try or two on the board, just build some confidence, maybe even uh, try to get four tries if you could and get a bonus point. But that seems a long way off right now as they have not even threatened the uh, try line really in this second half and had minimum time inside the offense of 22 in the first half. But they are making a bit of a break right now as Sailor's wrapped up from behind and brought down. Good piece of running there as the rowers aren't ready just to sit down and finish this game just yet. Here's an opportunity on the left wing side. One more man to beat. Getting around the corner and down across the line. And a bit of excessive celebrating from Lachlan Campbell as he was able to get in there for the Vancouver Rowing Club, scoring their first try of the game. And they have a very, very tall mountain to climb, but they are at least now in double digits. The score, 43 for Castaways, 11 for the Rowers. We can accuse the Castaway Wanderers of maybe a little bit of lazy tackling there, a little bit of uh, momentary lapse in focus after they are up by nearly 40 points. And they will want to learn from that lesson to uh, close out this game. Conversion kick is good and that brings the rowers total to 13. Quick restart, does land in play and finds touch. So we're checking the out of town scoreboard right now. We have James Bay. They are leading 27 to 12. Over UBC. And that is the only men's premier score I have for you right now. We'll keep you updated as long as Twitter can share that information with us. We saw UBC beat, check that, we saw James Bay defeat UBC in their one other match this season. So could UBC end up playing James Bay in the first round of the playoffs. That would be a great matchup, and maybe the Bays are getting in their heads just a little bit. Could they pull off two wins against the uh, team that no one else has managed to defeat this season? Still about uh, 20 minutes to go on that one. This one, we uh, were a little bit delayed in getting started. And we're certainly a little bit delayed in broadcasting this game with the 7 p.m. tape delay start. We're bringing back the era of NB NBA basketball from the 80s where the uh, sport just couldn't find its way onto live prime time. We don't have the internet speed here at Brockton Oval and we're happy to record the game and bring it to you at your c the convenience of your home or at Library Square Pub at 7 p.m. or on YouTube, wherever you're watching it, however you're watching it. We'd like to thank you for uh, joining us for this broadcast. It has not been quite as close as we would have liked from a competitive point of view, but it is very reassuring to see the winless Castaway Wanderers finally getting themselves organized and playing by far the best game of rugby they have had in the 2014-2015 campaign. They are sending a message to all the other clubs of the Canadian Direct Insurance Premier League that they will be a force to be reckoned with here in the second half of the season.
Offside again there, advantage is being played. And now the penalty stops play. Some of the players not too happy with each other how this game is progressing. We have some subs in there for Castaway Wanderers so long as the uh, numbers match the jersey or the number on the jersey matches the roster we were given. We saw a number 16 out there for Castaway Wanderers that uh, is Clayton Thornburg according to our roster information. Just moments ago the Roars were trying to Establish a play up the blind side, up the uh, touch line here. And just pushed out of bounds. Some fancy passing there, and Panga puts the ball to boot, and chases after it himself. The bounce not quite going his way, but a good thought there. Romain Planty is sent to the deck and a penalty being awarded for not releasing and this will be another penalty opportunity for castaway wanderers to kick it into the corner and continue to maintain pressure as there's really no need at this point to go for posts that kick finds touch inside the 22 about 20 minutes remaining in the second half here from Brockton Oval at Stanley Park in Vancouver. Line out quickly taken by Castaways and retained. And that Maul is able to pick them up about another four, or five, six, seven meters. It continues to move forward. Now threatening the rowers line. Finally, it's brought to ground. A couple more meters to go. The ball is being contested and coming in from the side or off his feet was one of the rowers players. And another penalty once again to Castaway Wanderers and they are right at the five meter line right now. So they'll just probably chip it into the corner. No, they're gonna go with the scrum at this phase here. And while they set that up, we would once again like to thank our sponsors who help us bring us the uh, game of the week every Saturday. Canadian Direct Insurance, B2 Gold, Neurogenesis Happy Water, Adira, Live West Coast, Extreme Rugby Wear, Okanagan Spring Brewery, Grosvenor, Avis and Young, Thorstensons, and Langara Fishing Adventures. The scrum has pushed itself across the line. Now it's just a matter of dotting it down. Can they find the ball at the back? And the ball looks like it was held up. And a penalty going against the rowers. So we'll do this once again. Very strong push from the castaway wanderers who benefit from definitely a bigger pack. And certainly one that's been exerting their dominance throughout this game. McPherson with the put in. Not quite as much momentum on this drive. Quickly picked up and it is held short of the line. Rowers trying to get the turnover. Lots of bodies in there as the ball is right at the line. A referee going side to side to assess the situation. The ball is not crossed yet, no signal. The whistle goes. Penalty there to the Roars. Check that, that's a try. My mistake on that one, we have another try for the Castaway Wanderers. I thought they may have been uh, held up just short, but the ball was dotted down under that pile of bodies, and we have five more points for Castaway Wanderers who are firmly in control of this game. 48-3, now your scoreline.
And as we have the Cricket World Cup going on today, Castaway Wanderers with a chance for 50 up the half century on this conversion attempt. Not to be as that ball was struck a little bit high and falls short of the posts. Off the restart, the ball is slashed into touch. Right on halfway, and we will have a line out coming to the Vancouver Rowing Club. They choose to go to the front of the line. Meekin starts the play. Ball spun into the middle of the field. The play slows down. Meekin trying to find it through some legs. Good hands there. As Cleary fends off a couple of Castaway Wanderers attack defenders. CW still looks like they're hungry for points. They've caused another turnover. Advantage and another penalty, this one going to the Roars. They want to use it quickly. Meekin trying to step through tacklers, but he was brought down. Roars is trying to find some positives here in the final quarter of this match. Bit of a tackle off the ball as the ball was in the feet. The castaway are able to scoop it up. Now over to Albernoz. He has the ball ripped from his hands. Contested and the rowers have it. Meekin to Cleary. Some low passes slowing down the movement of the ball, but it does find its way out onto the wing. Very little in the way of forward progress, however, as the rowers seem to be just moving the ball from the left to the right of the field. Looking for that line break, probing for a few extra yards. That ball is loose and a penalty coming. And once again, the rowers decide to go quickly. Now they're over halfway. Another advantage, some sloppy play here for Castaway Wanderers in the last couple of minutes few penalties going against them. Given the rowers opportunity to retain ball possession, but they haven't been able to do too much with it. As they have been contained right around that halfway line. It's penalty kick, taking an interesting bounce back into the middle of the field and in goal where it's dotted down. And we'll get a restart here for Castaway Wanderers. They go pretty quickly. And our referee not happy with that restart. Yeah. Oh. Ah, 
Rowers trying to organize an attack. They'll take advantage of yet another penalty to Castaways. They have tapped this one quickly now. They are inside the 22. And we're getting a lot of stop and start rugby here. Some tired legs out there on the field for the rowers as they try to push back. Castaway Wanderers very confident in their defense. They have a huge lead to work with, but they are committing some perhaps uh, errors in discipline. They want to be more focused here as they try to close out this game for their first win of the season. They'll try some wide rugby on the right side. That is Connor Cleary, and he is stopped. Check that Brett Lucas who had the ball there, and he was slowed down before he could get across the line. His teammates help him out, though, and then we have a try scored, a little bit of discussion. But that, uh, in the end, will stand as the second try for the Vancouver Rowing Club. Who will chip away at that lead somewhat. And they now have 18 points on the board for their efforts today. Kick from Planty drifts left of the posts. And so it remains a 30 point lead for Castaway Wanderers. Inside the last 10 minutes of the second half here at Brockton Oval. Just to recap, the Vancouver Rowing Club scored the first points of the game thanks to a penalty from Romain Plantine. After that, it was an onslaught from Castaway Wanderers as they scored the game's opening try. They also scored the game's opening four tries, a couple of them thanks to penalty tries, and uh, they have put on quite the performance here as they seek their first win of the Canadian Direct Insurance Premier League season. Not much room to work with on the near side. And a penalty is awarded. Looks like we'll come together for a scrum about 10 meters from the line. Bit of a check swing there from Armstrong, but he was able to hold on to the ball. CW still in possession, another five meters to cover here. Big drive from Hubert Biden's knock on, says our referee. So Vancouver Rowing Club will be able to get out of this. And there's a bit of an overlap if they can use the numbers out wide. That ball is thrown forward in the tackle and that ends the advantage. And 
so we will reset once again with the scrum. This one also inside the 22 meter line. And it will be a castaway Wanderers put in on that forward pass. And they have spent a lot of time inside that Rowers 22 throughout the game. Rowers able to steal that one against the head and push their way out to midfield, but it's intercepted and we're gonna get this one brought back. Another knock on the result here. Just checking the out of town scoreboard. Nothing to report. Go over to bcrugby.com to see all the scores from today's games across the Canadian Direct Insurance and Okanagan Spring and Library Square Leagues as well as the third division. We'll have them all there for you. We also have the return of the women's premier division that happened today. A couple of good fixtures going on there. And women's division one and two rugby also getting underway. It's a very, very full slate of rugby on a perfect day here in British Columbia. Rowers out of their own end and now on halfway, looking for a line break, not quite finding as Nick Samiju is brought down. A little attempt at a fancy offload and quick hands did not go as planned and the ball is thrown into touch. As the shadows get long and we game into the, get into the closing moments of this game here. It's a game that's had its moments. There have been a couple of great offensive bursts from uh, both teams, some good runs, lots of offense. Not maybe as close as we would have liked, but certainly a great display of rugby on uh, here at Stanley Park. Alberno is brought down after dodging a couple of tacklers. They'll swing the ball across the field, trying to get it to the wing. Rowers trying to poach the ball there and earning a penalty. Good run at the line there, not quite connecting, and a knock-on is the result from that play. <laughs> We'd like to send a big thank you to all of our sponsors at BC Rugby. We would like to thank Canadian Direct Insurance, B2 Gold, Neurogenesis Happy Water, Adira, Live West Coast, Extreme Rugby Wear, Okanagan Spring Brewery, Grosvenor, Avison Young, Thorstensons, and Langara Fishing Adventures. Took a long time to get the ball out there, but Castaway Wanderers are able to retain it. That ball does not find touch, and it's going to be counterattack time for the Rowers. CW quickly up on the line there, making the tackle, not giving the Rowers any offensive opportunities. Seems like they've been stuck around that halfway line the whole day. 
course, they've been their own enemy with uh, some disconnected passing at times as well. And there's an example as that ball is thrown into our referee, Chris Asmus. And perhaps that best summarizes our day today as rowers have not been ideal in their passing and Castaway Wanderers have been keen to punish them for any mistakes. Got a hat trick for Adam Kleberger in his return to the Castaway Wanderers, scoring three tries this afternoon. <laughs> a couple other returnees to the lineup, Clay Panga, who has the ball there, and Riley Elnicki. Check that, Jake Elnicki have both have very good games so far today. This game has been full of penalties. And that one kicked into touch on 22. As we close out the final moments of our game here this afternoon. We'll have the highlights for this game up later. We'll also have highlights from around the Canadian Direct Insurance Premier League and features, interviews, and more on BC Rugby Club. Join us at Library Square this Wednesday for our live taping, and then you can watch the show on Thursday at 9 p.m. as we do the broadcast of our BC Rugby Club February episode. Alberno spinning away from a couple of tacklers, tries the offload over to Jake Elnicki. Well done there from Elnicki as he's able to take that ball on the nice offload and gets in over the line, adding yet another try for Castaway Wanderers. And they'll break the half century mark with that tally, bringing their score line up to 53. A kick had enough leg, but it drifts wide, and that is it. Our final score from Brockton Oval in Stanley Park in Vancouver, the Castaway Wanderers 53, and the hometown Vancouver Rowers 18. A dominant performance from Castaway Wanderers. They will be a team to be taken much more seriously in the second half. They pick up their first win of the season on a great showing of rugby. Adam Kleberger with the hat trick. And that does it for us here today. As I said, join us for our live filming of BC Rugby Club on Wednesday from Library Square Public House in Vancouver. Until then, I'm Brendan Monroe. Thank you for joining us for our CDI Canadian Direct Insurance BC Rugby Game of the Week. Have a great afternoon, everybody. BC Rugby has a 125-year history, a history of success and pride. There's a place for everyone, young and old, boys and girls, one spirit, one team. Some play a small part, some larger, and some, the special ones, they know what it takes to grab onto that history and shake it to its core, inspiring us all.
They train for hours, alone, pushed by will, determination, no one watching, no one cheering. They find a way to push a little further, to ring out one more set, one more rep. You know your opponent is training hard, so you train harder. Your biggest threat may not be the opposition, because someone always wants to wear your jersey, to take it from you. What are you prepared to do to keep it? That jersey, that crest, forever bonds you to something bigger, makes you stronger than you could ever be on your own. So you push harder, dig deeper until you have nothing left. Because it's all about the team, those fighting beside you now, and those who came before you. BC Rugby, one spirit, one team.